How many, are you ready to learn something? How, you ready to grow? You ready to, ready, ready to expand your life? And, 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 and I'm going to take you into a passage of scripture that, where Jesus is teaching. It's, in fact, it's a Sermon on the Mount. And, and he, he gives us our purpose in life. Because people come to me all the time and say, I would like to know God's will for my life. And I say, well, I, I can tell you. When Jesus was on earth, he literally gave us his will for what, what he wants and what he wants to see in our purpose in life. And, and so we're going to read about it right now. So it's on, it's on the screen. And let me just read it to you and, and let's get going. Jesus says, let, let me tell you why you're here. You're here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? You've lost your way, and you end up in garbage. And here's another way to put it. You're here to be light. He says, I want you to know you're here to be salt. You're here to be light. And in this light is to bring out God's colors in the world. So God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this. As public as a sit on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I put you there... On a hilltop, on a light stand, shine and keep open house and be generous with your lives. And, and by opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God, your generous Father who is in heaven. And so Jesus said, I, I want you to know that you were created to be salt. Salt makes things better. You're cre created to be light. Light makes things brighter. In fact, I didn't show the first service this, but on my on my iPhone, if they can come real close to this, to, to this cover here, you can see a light bulb and a salt shaker. And with the words right underneath, be these. You know, I'm, I'm here to shake the salt. I'm a, I'm a salt shaker in my community. And, my, you know, I go around just shaking salt. Here, so give it a little sign. Yeah. 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 And, and, and I'm out there turning on the light. You with me? I'm turning on the light. I'm shaking the salt. I, I think that I, I really got a little glimpse of, of who I was in God and, and what I could be when I was a, a young pastor and I had a staff member give me a, a Christmas gift. I opened it up. It was a book. And the title of the book on the cover, and I love to read, the title of the book on the cover was The Greatest Story Ever Told. And I thought, oh my gosh, I, I can hardly wait to read this book, The Greatest Story Ever Told. It has to be amazing. And I opened it up, and much to my surprise, the pages were blank. And I looked at her, and I said, I don't understand. It says, The Greatest Story Ever Told, and there, there, there's no story. She said, go to the front cover. And I went inside the front cover. She'd written me a note. And the note simply read, John, your life is before you. On these pages, write down your dreams your hopes, the desires of your heart. You write your story and make it the greatest story ever told. I took that book home, and this is before I ever became an author, it's before I ever wrote books. And I, at the very top page of, of the very first blank, I wrote, I want to make a difference. I, I really did. I, I, I knew... I didn't know how I was going to make a difference. I didn't know when I was going to make a difference. I, I didn't even know why I was going to make a difference. But, but I, just knew, I just knew that I wanted to make a difference. And so I, I began this, I want to add value to people. I want to help people. I want to lift people. And, and pretty soon I began to find you know, my strengths. And, and, and I, I began to believe that everything rises and falls on leadership. So I began to train leaders so that I could multiply influence. And, and then I began to write books so I could extend my influence. My mentor, Les Parrott, had written five books. I didn't, hadn't written any books. I didn't even have a desire to write a book. I love to read, but I never thought I wanted to write. And I asked him one day at lunch, I said, Les, why do you write books? And he said, I write books to extend my influence way beyond my personal touch. And I leaned into that table that day and said, I'm going to become a writer. And I literally went back and, and, and I started writing books. And I started training leaders. And we developed, over time, the largest leadership training organization in the world. Six million leaders trained in every country of the world. And when we finished training leaders, 
And, and this took us 19, in, in 19 years, we went from zero trained leaders to six million in every country of the world. And we did it with volunteers. We had volunteers training around the world. It's an, an incredible story. I don't have time for it today. But after training leaders, I felt within my spirit that there was another level that I wanted to, that I wanted to bring out of people. I, I wanted him to be a trained leader, but I also wanted him to be a transformational leader. And you see, a, a, a trained leader, they know how to lead, but a transformational leader has a heart to lead. And, and trained leaders, they lead people through change, but transformational leaders, they make changes in people. You see, trained leaders, they focus on the the vision which is on the outside, but transformational leaders, they focus on the values which is on the inside. Trained leaders, they influence people for today, but, but transformational leaders, they influence people for today and tomorrow. You know, trained leaders, they embrace success which is all about me, it's all about you. But, tra- but transformational leaders, they embrace significance. It's all about others. I've known a lot of unhappy, successful people in life. A lot of them, they have a lot of money, got all kind of stuff, but they're unhappy. I, I know a lot of unhappy, successful people, but every person that lives with significance, every person that lives to add value to people, I've never met an unhappy, significant person. And I said, I, I really wanna, I wanna take leaders and help them to become transformational, and that's what we do. That's what our organization does. That's when Stephen was talking about your help with us in our nonprofit area. We literally bring transformation to countries around the world. And, and we're seeing amazing things happen. Our, our goal in a country is to get 10% of that country into small groups learning good values. And, and we found that if, if we can get to 10, Malcolm Gladwell talks about the tipping point. There's a tipping point in a culture where you can begin to change that culture in a positive way. And, and when we get to that tipping point, for example, we've been in Guatemala the longest. We've been in there for nine years now, 20 million people. And we just passed 10% of the people, 10% of the population of Guatemala now is in small groups learning values and we're changing a country. Isn't that beautiful? And, and I want to... I want, to give, I want to give you today six pictures of transformation. And I'm going to give you these pictures and we're going to do some motions. And, and you're never going to forget this. I, I, I promise you, a, a, a month from now, if I walked into your life and I said, talk to me about transformation and how it works, you're going to be able to talk to me. You're going to be able to tell me without notes how it works because the teaching is going to be now so fun and so simple. I'm going to give you six pictures. Let me, let me give you the pictures to write down. Then let me show you the, the motions, the actions that will help cement those pictures. The first picture on transformation I want you to have is a picture of you. You put yourself in the first picture because transformation, it begins with you. It doesn't begin on the outside with someone else. It doesn't even begin big. It just begins with one person, but that one person basically saying, I want to be transformed. And the reason that it begins with you and me is very simple. We teach what we know, but we reproduce who we are. So for me to teach transformation without being transformed will never have a positive effect on people. But the moment that I am changed and my life has been changed, I now become a transformational carrier. There's one thing to speak transformation. There's another thing to visually live it out. So transformation begins in me. So the first picture is a picture of yourself. The second picture is a picture of someone else. And in this picture, you're joining hands with that individual. In other words, you're coming to that person and you're saying, together we can accomplish more than we can accomplish if we're separate. You begin to understand the value of partnerships. You begin to understand the value of of coming together as a team. You you begin to find that teamwork makes the dream work. You begin to understand that me is greater than we. In fact, all great leaders take the vision from me to we. In, In fact, a me vision doesn't go very far. A we vision goes very far. 
And so you begin to have this partnership. You begin to join hands. So the second picture is someone else that, that you're joining hands with. So first picture is me. It begins with me, but then I need others. So now I've got someone else included. I'm joining hands with them. The third picture is a ladder. And, and we know the purpose of a ladder. The purpose of a ladder is to help people climb higher. You, 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 every time you see a ladder, you know somebody's going to go up to a higher level. That's why the steps are there. And, and what transformation does is it begins to lift people higher. It helps them to, to reach their potential. And we're going to talk all these pictures that, we'll, that I'm giving you, and we do the motions, I'll, I'll then teach off of them. And so that by the end, you know, by the end of my talk, you, every one of you are going to walk out of here, and you're going to have transformation potential within you. I mean, you, you're going to have to go back to, to your family. You're going to have to go back to your community, and you're, you're going to have to say, watch out. <laughs> you, you're just going to have, oh, my gosh. I just figured something out. This is going to be absolutely amazing. You're going to, you're going to have to have... A John the Baptist go before you saying, she is coming, she is coming, you know. <laughs> he is coming, he is coming. Trust me on this. So there's a picture of a ladder which helps people climb up to reach their potential. The fourth picture is of a heart. And this speaks of values. You see, it's, it's in the heart that values are formed. And, and there are a lot of people, they focus on the outside. They focus on Image. They focus on branding. They, they focus on outwardly positioning themselves for success. And what they don't understand is the only way that you can truly, over time, become bigger on the outside is if you're bigger on the inside. That, that it all starts with it. It's an inside job. We become better on the inside so that we can become better on the outside. But, but it begins with the heart. It begins with character. It begins with values. You know, so many people, they put their, their time and their energy into the laws. But you see, the laws can't change a life. If the laws could change a life, we would have never needed Jesus to come to this world. It's, it's the inside. that It starts with the values on the inside. So that's a beautiful picture. It's a picture of me. It's a picture of you. It's a picture of a ladder. It's a picture of a heart where values are loved and lived out and embraced. And then the fifth picture is the picture of a table, a table just like this, just a, a little table where a few people sit around it. And at that table is where they learn and talk about values. It, it's, it's where values training happens. I wrote a book called Change Your World. I've written over 100 books. In fact, I had a lady the other day tell me, she said, you have written more books than I've read. Now, let me just stop here for a moment. When Stephen talked about 100 books and all that stuff, let me, let me just, let's level, get the playing field level here. It's no big deal. It's no big deal. You just have to be old. It's, it's, it's no big deal. If you're not old, you can't do 100 books. So when somebody says they've done 100 books, first thing is, is not think brilliant or genius, think old. You say, well, John's 75, good Lord, no wonder he's written 100 books. I mean, good. Yeah. And what's incredible is I have about a dozen books still in me. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, and, they're, and they're saying, let me out, let me out, let me out. And I got a whole list of all the things I, I want to I write on. It's just, it's just huge. I was talking to God the other day. I said, God, I, I got news for you. I got at least a dozen books. You, I'm, you're going to have to let me live a long time. You, you really are. It's not done. You follow me. I, they're, they're, still, they're, still, they're still inside of me. But, but it's, it's, so, it's so beautiful when we understand the, the beauty and the power of the table. And, and around the table, the, the sharing and the interaction and the giving and the taking and all the magic that happens. It, it, you know, in, in my book, Change Your World, I have a whole chapter that basically says, you, you, you know, you change your world one table at a time. And it's what we do in Guatemala. It's what we do in Paraguay. It's what we do in Costa Rica. It's what we do in the Dominican Republic. It's what we're getting ready to do in, in, in New Guinea. You, you, we change the world one table. We get people to, to talk about, learn and live and explain and share values around the table. So that's the fifth, fifth picture. 
And the sixth picture is a bridge. Bridge is a beautiful picture. It's a picture of transformation. So it's, it's the picture of how to change your world because what we do is we build a bridge for people and we take them from where they are to where they'd like to go. It's the bridge of potential. It's a bridge of possibilities. It's, 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 it takes them to the place that they were really created to be part of. And so those six pictures, a picture of me, a picture of someone else, me joining hands with them, a picture of a ladder helping people climb up to their potential, a picture of the heart values that we learn those values, we live those values, a picture of a, a table around that table where we share those values and, and the bridge that just helps them go to a, a better place. So, so now, do you have the six pictures in your mind? You got, now, it's good to have them in your mind, but the mind can't hold what I gave you. But I'm going to now give you a way to, you'll never forget the six pictures. In fact, look at your neighbor and say, even you can do this. Go ahead and tell them that. <laughs> even you, even you can do this, okay? Okay, let's, we, now, you got to put your notes aside. You all got to stand up because we're going to do motions now, okay? All right, this is, we've written it, so we've got it in our brain. Now we're, we're going we're to do the motions, all right? <laughs> And it's very simple. The pictures I gave you, what, what the transformation, where does it begin? It begins in me, doesn't it, huh? It starts with me, right? And, and it, Transformation begins in me, and it continues as I what? Join hands. Shake hands with somebody. Join hands. I'm join hands. To, hey, with, some, with others. You with me? <laughs> with others. You with me? I'm joining hands with others. And, and what are we doing? As we partner, as we join hands, what are we, we're helping people to what? Climb up. Come on. Come on. Climb up to their potential. That's it. To, to learn. To learn. And to live good values. It's in the heart. You got it? Around the table. To build a bridge. To a better future. Oh, you're going to be good. You're going to be good. Yeah, yeah, you're, go, you're, you're, you're going to be good. I didn't say you were good yet. I just said you're going to be good. Don't, don't get it confused. See, but I can tell you got it. You got seeds of greatness. You're going to be good. So this is really going to be good. The question is this. Are you going to be as good as the first service? That's the question. Now, and I'm, I, I, I will be the judge. You understand? Age has its privileges. And so we're going to do it. We'll do it a couple times because one of the things I teach is you're never good the first time, okay? I love when people say, well, I really want to do I've never done it before. I really want to do it good. And I say, relax. It won't be that good. <laughs> it's the first time. You know what I'm saying? When we talked, we weren't good the first time. When we walked, we weren't good the first time. You, you practice to get good. You, you, you don't, you, leadership, how do you develop leaders? You, practice, you have to practice leadership. Well, we're going to practice transformation now, okay? And, it, and so, so you, you get, are you ready? Are you getting ready, huh? Now, now, now I, know, I know, I know, I know you're ready. I do know that. I'm, I'm not concerned about you. The person on the left isn't quite as sharp as you. See, what's amazing is you noticed that too, didn't you? As soon as I said the person on the left, you were kind of going, yeah. yeah. How, 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 how did he know this? And, and, and so it's okay. It's okay. Just look at the person beside and say, I'll help you. Go ahead and tell him I'll, I'll help you. I'll help you. It's going to be all right. Okay. It's going to be all right. Okay. Are you ready to go? Huh? You ready? Come on. I mean, are you ready to go? Yeah. When, when I asked the first church, are they ready to go, it was ridiculous. I mean, they were jumping up and down, and they were high-fiving each other, so I'm, I'm not trying to put any pressure, none at all, but right now, you're behind. You're behind, okay? So it's okay. It's okay. I'm your friend. My name is John, and, and I'm going to help you catch up, okay? So are you ready now? Huh? Are you? Huh? Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Yeah. Now, now, before we go, I, I just want to say, that's the power of coaching. 
See how good you got when you're just coached a little bit, huh? So, okay, I can tell you ready. Okay, transformation. Here you are, you ready? Transformation begins in me as I join hands with others to help people climb up to their potential to learn and to live good values around the table to build a bridge to a better future. Oh. Oh yeah. yeah. Let me, let me, hey, you're not there yet, but I see the possibility. First service, second service. Is this, is, is this possible? Is that possible? Well, let, let's find out. You ready? Let's go. Transformation begins in me. As I join hands with others to help people climb up to their potential to learn and live good values around the table to build a bridge to a better future. Hold on. Let me just say this. Now, now, let me explain something. You're bringing the best out of me. You're almost better than the first group. We're going to do it again. But I'm telling you, you're making me better than I was with the first group. So you're already inspiring your leader. You understand how that works? I mean, did you, did, I, know, I know you wouldn't recognize them because I'm white, but did you see any dance moves? Did, did you see, did, I, I know, I, 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 I'm never going to get what you, yeah, I know, but did you, did you see a little dance moves? Uh, just a little? Did you see me limbering up? But your attitude is so good and your spirit is so good and your encouragement is so good. I am now considering taking you on the road with me. We may, we may do a, we may do, a, okay, are, are you ready? So this time we'll do the motions and maybe a, just a little, just a, huh? Just Here we go. Transformation begins in me. As I join hands to help people climb up to their potential to learn, to live good values. Around the table to build a bridge to a better future. Ho, oh, come on, come on. Woo. That, that, I am so, uh, you just made a 75 year old man happy. Happy. I'm having so much fun. The only way it's going to get better if Jesus takes me right now. <laughs> Give yourself a hand. You are fabulous. And then you may be seated. Now, whoo, wasn't that good? I love that. 
And, and by the way, excuse me. Now, let me give you those pictures and let me do a little teaching, not a lot, because I want to dance some more. You understand? But let, let, let me, let me down to, let, let's start with the fact transformation. It begins in me. When I was 24, I came to the conclusion that everything rises and falls on leadership. Everything. When things go well, it's because you have good leadership. When things don't go well, it's because the leadership's not effective. Everything rises and falls. Well, what makes leadership rise? What, what makes things happen that are good when leadership is right? Two things. Good leadership skills and good leadership values. Good skills, good values, Everything rises. To get good skills, you train leaders. To get good values, you talk about transformation. And it's not either or. If you have good leadership skills, but you don't have good values, you won't be a good leader because you'll take advantage of people. You'll manipulate them instead of motivate them. Manipulation is always wrong. Manipulation is when I move you for my advantage. It's always wrong. Motivation, that's what leaders do. They move people. But they move people for mutual advantage. It's win-win. So when I have good skills and I have good values, my leadership goes upward. When I either have bad skills leadership-wise or bad values, it goes down. And by the way, if I have good leadership skills but I have bad values, it still goes down. If I have good values but poor leadership skills, it still goes down. you got to have both. And it begins exactly where we are. Now, this is absolutely huge. We need to understand this. In my book, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, I teach the law of the lid. And the law of the lid just simply says, how well you lead determines how well you succeed. So visually, if I'm an average leader, from a scale of one to 10, if I'm an average leader, watch my hand, and I'm a five, I'm average I'm just in the middle. If this is my leadership skill and competence right now, and it's a five, what that means is that my organization, my team, my business will be a four. But my leadership will be a lid on it, and, and it won't allow me to get bigger and grow more and help more people because my leadership is the lid on my future. So sometimes in Q&A, People will raise their hand. They'll say, John, you know, are leaders born? Whenever they ask me that question, I always, always give them the same answer. Of course they are. <laughs> Think about that question. I've never met an unborn leader. <laughs> and I don't particularly want to either. You see, they're not asking our leaders born. What they're really asking is, are there some people when they're born, they got it? And there's some people when they're born, they don't got it. And if you got it, you go to the front of the line. If you don't got it, you go to the back of the line. And I'm here to tell you, my name is John. I'm your friend. And I've trained six million leaders in every country of the world. And you can learn to lead. It's a transferable, teachable skill. Every one of you in this room, no matter how good of a leader you are right now, you can become a better leader. In fact, look at the person beside you and just say to them, you can become a better leader. Tell them that. Tell them that. Yeah. And in fact, look right back at them and say, and it's about time. It's, it's about time. How long are we going to have to wait here? How, how, how long are we going to have to wait? If we, this, is, this is beautiful. So now watch this. If my leadership level, my, my lid is a five, and so therefore my organization is a four. But if I can learn to lead, I can raise the lid. And I go from a five to a six to a seven. 
maybe to an A. And the moment I raised my lid, what happens to my, my team? My organization goes from a four to a five to a six to a seven. As the leader goes, so goes the people. But it begins with you and me. But then it continues with that partnership of joining hands. It's, it's, it's the Mother Teresa idea. She said, you can, you can do things I can't do, and I can do things you can't do, but, but together we can do great things. In my book on the laws of teamwork, I talk about the law of Mount Everest. The law of Mount Everest just simply says, as the challenge escalates, the need for teamwork elevates. You see, if I'm going to climb Mount Everest, if I, if I told you, you know, as soon as I'm done preaching, I'm going to get on a plane, I'm going to go to Nepal. And I thought I would just put on my put on my tennis shoes and I just thought I would just maybe take a day and run up to the top of Mount Everest and plant a flag and take a picture and come back home. You'd say, oh, John, that can't happen. You, you can't climb Mount Everest by yourself. It's, it's too big. It's never been done. You have to have a team. You see, she, the bigger the dream, the better the team you gotta have. It, this is huge. In fact, do you wanna know what a nightmare is? A nightmare is a big dream and a bad team. It doesn't work that way. You got to have good people and you got to train people. One of the things that impresses me very much about the leadership of Stephen and Zai and this church is how much they've empowered and how much you've got so many good leaders. This, it's, it's, a, it's a very beautiful thing. Trust me, I know leadership. And, 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 and transformation, it, it, we, we have to do it together. When I wrote in that book, I want to make a difference on the first page. In a few years, I realized that I had to go to the second, second sentence. I want to make a difference with people who want to make a difference. Now, I didn't just say with people. In the beginning, I said with people. Then I realized some people don't want to make a difference. So, so I, I realized I wasn't trying to get a crowd. You know, a lot of people, they just want on the train for a ride. You, you with me? I said, I want to make a difference with people who want to make a difference. So the picture, now we're joining hands. And what are we doing? We're, we're, we've got a ladder. And why, why do we have a ladder? To help people climb up to their potential. When you see a ladder, you know one thing. That ladder is there for one purpose, to help people go higher. And by the way, here's, don't miss this. We don't take the ladder and throw it down to the people and say, climb out. We don't, we don't stand at the top and say, hey, come on, let's go, let's go. You can do it, come on, come on, come on. No, we take the ladder and we go down there and we hold the ladder for them. We're ladder holders. And the reason we hold ladder, we want it to be a solid and stable. We want to make sure that they get to that top. We want, we want to guarantee a success. So we hold. We don't lead from the top. We lead from the bottom. You see, if you're hurting, I'll help you. If you're broken, I'll fix you. But if you're valuable, I'll serve you. It's valuing people that makes us servant leaders. You see, if you're hurting, I help you, and you're broken, I fix you. I'm still on top. I'm kind of like the Messiah. Thank God John came. I was hurting, he helped me. I was broken, he fixed me. I'm still on top. But the moment that I become a servant leader and I see you as valuable, I serve you. Instead of me being top, I turn that and I'm now on the bottom. So in transformation, we're servant leaders and we hold the ladders to help people reach their potential. And why, how do, how do they, what, what, the rungs on those ladders are values. And so, so now they're learning good values. And every time they learn another good value, every time they learn and live another value, what happens is they become more valuable. They become more valuable to themselves. They become more valuable to their community. They become more valuable to the people around them. This is so beautiful. We have discovered around these tables. We've just discovered some of the most beautiful, beautiful stories. You see, here's how this works. A few years ago, the United Nations asked me to speak at their opening session 
to all the ambassadors of the world and they says, well, they want me to teach for two hours on the subject of leadership. And I thought this is going to be a real challenge because, um, wow, these leaders come from different kind of governments. There are, some, there are kings and kingdoms. There are democracies. There's social. I mean, there's all kind of governments. I mean, how can I put us, how can I get us together? And, and that day I spoke on this subject so that I could bring diversity and give some cohesiveness to it. I spoke on the fact that there are three questions that every follower asks of their leader, regardless of country, regardless of time, regardless of culture. And those three questions are very simple. Can you, you, do you care for me? Can you help me? And can I trust you? Wow. Do you care for me? That's, that's, that's all about compassion. Can you help me? That's all about competence. Are you any good? If I follow you, is it going to get better? And can I trust you? That, that's all about character. And what makes the tables work is it's around a table. It's around a table that they learn these incredible life-changing values. A few years ago, Mark Cole, who's with me today, who's the part owner and CEO of all of our seven companies, Mark Cole and I, I was invited to by the king of, 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 of Saudi Arabia to come and, 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 and talk to that country. They, they, that what, had, what was interesting is, is the king of Saudi Arabia had, it's a kingdom, okay, so he's a king. <laughs> it's just a different deal. And he had said by the year of 2030, he wanted, he wanted Saudi Arabia to, to uh, be transformed and he wanted him to be a, a moderate a moderate Muslim country, and and so he asked me to come over, and and so I went over for for you know for a weekend to teach them and and meet the family and and meet their leaders and and do transformation for them, and I waited till the last session because I I I wanted to work relation. I wanted to make them I wanted to make them know that I cared for them, that I valued them, before because I I knew that there was a hard lesson yet to come and. And so in the last lesson, the last, the last Sunday afternoon, happened to be on Easter three years ago, with, with the royal family and the leaders of Saudi Arabia, I, I spent two hours talking about values. This is huge. You see, in Galatians chapter five, it gives the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace. You know the passage. And it says these qualities, the last sentence, I've never heard anybody preach on it. The last sentence of that, Fruit of the Spirit said, these qualities are above the law. And you see, the law can never answer life's greatest questions. It comes up short. That's why Jesus had to come to this world. The, the law is not enough. It's, it's, it's what's on the inside. You see, if, if my inside isn't right, I'll find ways to break the law. It, it, it's an inside job. You, it, but, but when my values are right, I don't even need the law. Are you with me? Yeah. And, and, and so in that last session, I had to tell the people in the kingdom that I knew the king made an edict that by 2030 that the country was going to be transformed. But I said, there's no such thing as a law that can transform a country. Oh, I, I thought, this may, this may be my last speech. They, they, they may put a blindfold on me, <laughs> cigarette in my mouth, and you may never see me again. But it was an incredible, beautiful session as I taught these beautiful people and I saw them migrate. And I saw them lean in to the fact that it's, it's, it's in the heart. It's, it, the, it's in the heart where the issues of life are. And what we do in these countries is we teach, we teach the heart issues. And we teach them in the classroom. We teach them with kids. In, in every public school in Guatemala, children now have values curriculum in the classroom. In, in the classroom. Not, not before school, not after school, not around the flagpole, all the things that Christians do that have very little return. It's in the classroom. It's with math, language, values. 
the Secretary of Education of Guatemala, we have over a million kids now in the classroom learning values, said that the teachers tell them that in, within three weeks they can see a decided difference in the attitude of the children because of the values. Listen to me very carefully. Here's what we've learned. We, I know this social media stuff. By the way, you, you think it's new and relevant. I was doing social media in the fourth grade. <laughs> it, it's, it's no big deal. I'm in, I'm in the fourth grade, and I look over to my right, and Tammy Halstenberg lives, or is sitting there. And she's really pretty. And I think, man, I think, I, I think I'm in love with her. <laughs> so I write her a note. Tammy, I love you. <laughs> then I put two boxes. <laughs> I started social media. <laughs> it started right here. I, I took, put, put two boxes in. The first box says, you know, do you love me? The second box, you can check, says, you, you, I, I don't love you. I, I slipped it over to Tammy. She opened it up. She read it. She got her pencil out. She checked the box and slipped it back over to me. And I opened it. and She said she didn't love me. I quit social media that day. By the way, here's what we learned. Here's what we learned. This is a fact. When kids have good values on the inside, they need less validation on the outside. And when I lack good values on the inside, I need a lot of people's approval. I need a lot of people's approval. And so what we do is we teach transformation in countries. We have 22 countries where presidents have asked us to come in. And I just want you to know you have a part in it because if you're giving and financial love to us and because we're part of the family and you're part of our family, every time we're there doing transformation in these countries with all these wonderful things happening, you have stake in the game. You have an investment in this wonderful work. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. I want to thank you. I've got to wrap it up. So let, me, so let me just close with this story. I was 17 years of age, and, and I, um, I, I received Christ on a Tuesday, developed a relationship with God. And I'll never forget it because it was, it was a beautiful time in my life. And on Friday morning, I was reading some scripture. And in the scripture that I was reading, it said, it was Paul's writing. He said, if you're in Christ, you become a new creation. Old things pass away and old things become new. And I realized as a 17-year-old kid, all of my sins were behind me now. Completely gone and washed away. That I was a new person in Christ. And when I went to school that morning, on that Friday morning, for the first time, I knew my life was transformed. And, and for the first time, there was a, an incredible strength and an incredible purpose and mission and fulfillment and peace in my life because I realized my life had been completely, beautifully changed by Jesus. And I just want you to know the greatest transformational leader that ever lived was Jesus Christ. And he said, I am come that you may have life. And then he said that you may have it more abundantly. In fact, if you look at that verse in John 10, it literally reads this way. I have come that you might have life, comma, and have it more abundantly. The question I have for you this morning is this. Which side of the comma do you live on? Do you live on the left side with you just have life? Or do you live on the Jesus side, that you have abundant life. If you'll close your eyes with me just for a moment, I'm going to have a prayer. And the reason I'm going to pray is because there are many of you, as you're seated in your heart, you would love to have that abundant life, that purpose, that peace, that strength, that fulfillment. In fact, you're sitting in your seat right now and you're, you're just a little hungry. You're just a little hungry to know God. To know that, that he's not only your savior, but he's your eternal friend.
to know that he'll never leave you and never forsake you. You're kind of hungry right now to have a relationship with him. And he said this, I stand at your heart's door and I knock. And if you open your heart's door, Jesus said, I will come in. He didn't say I might come in. He didn't say I probably will come in. He didn't say I usually come in. He didn't say I come in if I feel like it. He said, if you open your heart, I promise you, I come in. And I'm going to pray this prayer. And as you're seated in your heart, I want you to pray it with me. And for many of you this morning, when you ask him to come in, that's exactly what he's going to do. And he's going to transform, beautifully change your life. So in your heart, pray with me. Lord Jesus, I, I really want to know you. And I really want you to live in my life. And I really want my sins to be forgiven. And I really want to have a, a, a purpose, a mission in life. And I, I really, what I want is a, a father, a savior, a relationship with you. And you're here right now. You're, you're knocking at my heart's door. And, and I just now ask you to come into my life. Thank you. Thank you for loving me enough to come to my heart's door. Thank you for loving me enough to knock. Thank you for loving me enough to wait until I just now open my heart and, and ask you to come in. From this day forward, Lord, I'm going to love you and live for you live with you from this moment on I'm going to be transformed so that I can make a difference in my life in the life of my family in the life of my community and for that I thank you in Jesus name and everybody said amen I love you very much God bless you